Hi, my name is Warren, and I am the product genius here at South Shore Mini. I'd like to congratulate you again on your new Mini Cooper S Countryman All 4. In today's video, I'd like to take you through an overview of all of the features packed into your new Mini. To begin, we're going to take a look over here on the door where we find our window controls for the four windows and they are fully automatic both up and down by pressing the button as far as it will go or pulling it up as far as it will go. The button at the back here of your window controls will disable the rear controls so if you had pets or small children back there, they would not be able to open or close the windows inadvertently. At the top here, you find your side view mirror controls. You can select left or right and make your adjustments with the joystick. Door locks are integrated into the door handle here. The same is found on the passenger side of the car. Up here on the left, we find the headlight controls. We have a fully automatic mode, which is indicated by the A, which is the position on the left. And the headlights will come on and off day and night by themselves, as well as they will also come on when it is raining out and the automatic windshield wipers are on. Straight up and down is off for the headlights. The position over to the right of that are to illuminate your parking lamps. And the next position to the right is manual headlights fully on in case you wanted to turn them on yourself. The little round button you find here is to turn on and off your front fog lights. And there's a little rotary dial tucked right behind here that you can use to adjust the intensity of your instruments at night. Down below, you will find the hood release as well as an additional trunk release tucked into the door pocket. On the end of your turn signal, you will find two buttons, one on top labeled BC, and that is to toggle through information in your board computer, which is at the bottom of your instrument cluster here. And each time you press the BC button, you will get a different piece of information The button on the bottom, symbolized with the headlights and the A, is to enable automatic high beams at night. And this system will automatically dim your high beams if there's an oncoming car detected. And once that car passes by, your high beams will resume. Additionally, with the turn signal, you are able to give it a single touch in a direction and it will give you three flashes, which is perfect for changing lanes on the highway. The stalk on the right controls your windshield wipers. All of the different positions are notated on here in case you forget what they are. A single press down will give you one wipe. The first position up is your automatic mode, as indicated by the green light on auto. The next click up is low speed, and the final click is high speed. The center dial allows you to adjust the sensitivity of the automatic mode. On the end, you find the control for the rear wiper, and you twist in order to turn it on, and you can twist it further in order to spray the windshield washer fluid on the rear window. And of course, the front window, you pull the stick towards you in order to spray the front. 
Taking a look at our steering wheel, we have cruise control on the left. Taking a look at the steering wheel, we have our controls for the cruise control system here on the left. We're able to press the center button to start the system. Set will hold whatever speed we are currently at. You can use plus and minus to increase or decrease the set speed. Pressing in all the way on plus and minus will change the speed by five miles per hour. Pressing to the first click on the button will change it by one. C pushing cancel will cancel the cruise control. If it is already canceled, pressing resume will resume the previously set speed. Of course, always pressing the brake pedal will cancel the system as well. On the right side here, we'll find volume controls down and up, and that's good for anything from music to phone calls to the, sound, the level of the uh, voice instructions on your navigation system. Anything uh, audio related, you can adjust the volume. Up and down arrows would allow you to cycle through, in this case, radio stations but it could also be previous and next if you were playing music. Telephone button allows you to answer and hang up phone calls. And the person speaking here is how you activate the voice commands with the car. A single press will activate the voice assistant. If you were to have your phone paired with CarPlay and you had an iPhone, you could activate Siri by pressing and holding the button until the Siri tone comes in. You also have paddle shifters, plus and minus, that will allow you to shift manually at any time by simply pressing on the plus or the minus paddle to upshift or downshift. Moving over to the center part of our car, we have our central display. At the top of this display, we find the button to turn on our hazard lights or flashers. We also find a button to the right that shows a picture of a car with a green ring or halo around it. This lets us know when it's green that our intelligent safety systems are active. Pressing this button once will deactivate one of the systems. In this case, it deactivates the pedestrian warning. Pressing and holding the button turns the light off completely and deactivates both systems. These two systems, frontal collision warning and pedestrian warning, use a forward-facing camera mounted in your rear view mirror that watches the road ahead of you and will detect any possible situations that could lead to a collision. And that collision could be with a car in terms of frontal collision warning or with a pedestrian in terms of the pedestrian warning. Both of these systems use both visual and acoustic warnings to get your attention. The system will display a picture of a red car in your instrument cluster as a first step towards warning you. If it's more severe, that car will flash. It'll be accompanied by an acoustic tone and the car will prime the brakes so that when you do apply the brakes, they're going to have maximum effectiveness. The pedestrian warning system is similar. It operates at city speeds and is looking for a pedestrian that might step out in front of your car. 
it detects them, it'll issue you a similar series of visual and audible warnings. This system will intervene with the brakes if necessary for up to a second and a half to make the initial first step in bringing the car to a stop. And it allows you then to step in yourself and apply the brakes and bring the car to a complete stop. Both of these systems really I like to describe as being a second set of eyes watching the road ahead of you. The systems are not designed in any way to drive the car for you. They are simply looking out for you and giving you a heads up if it thinks something might be going wrong. Pushing this button when it's deactivated will reactivate as indicated by the green ring. Moving down, we have the central display. On the display, we have a variety of categories that you can scroll through. Starting on the lower right, we have media and radio. In here, we're able to select different sources for music from satellite radio to FM and AM. If we had our phone paired with Bluetooth, we'd be able to also listen to music from our phone with Bluetooth audio. Under the communication tab, if our phone was paired with Bluetooth, we would be able to view our contacts list. We'd be able to see recent calls and redial we could dial a number manually. Managed mobile devices would allow us to connect a new device or delete old devices. If your phone is paired with Apple CarPlay, you will see an additional category that will be added to your home screen here, and it will be entitled Apple CarPlay, and that will enable you to enter into the CarPlay software and interact with your phone that way. We've got the notifications tab, which is simply anything your car wants to tell you. If I were to open my door, it will give an alert. The door is open. If there were to be a more serious message regarding your vehicle status, you could find more information about that in the notifications tab. But of course, the car would tell you front and center if there were to be something like a low tire or service necessary, the car will give you a pop-up message in your instrument cluster. Mini Connected is where you can find various assistance. You can dial roadside assistance, you can dial Mini Customer Support, and you can also dial the service center here at South Shore Mini. There's a variety of apps that are built into your Mini that you can access, and those are down here. My Mini is where you'll find all of your settings. Anything you'd want to customize with your car, you'd find in here, from lighting to door locks, driving modes, adjusting date and time, configuring your displays, setting driver profiles, vehicle status. This is an important one. This is where you can see, of course, your tire pressure monitor, as well as your engine oil level, as well as any system messages from your car, and to see when service might be due for various categories. And finally, if your car is equipped with onboard navigation, you'll see the navigation tab at the bottom here. Clicking this brings you into the navigation system where you can enter an address, pull up recent destinations to navigate to again. You can of course go into the map, 
there's quite a lot packed into the onboard navigation system. If you're interested in learning more about that specifically, I do have another video on our YouTube channel where I take a much deeper dive into how to use the navigation system. So check that out if you're interested in learning more about navigation. At the bottom of your central display here, you do have six shortcut buttons, numbered one through six, and these can store virtually anything that you want quick access to. They can be something from a radio station. In this case, I've highlighted 89.7. Push and hold on a button. And now I've stored 89.7 WGBH to button one. I could do the same thing with contacts. Uh, I could store phone numbers onto here for people I'd want to be able to dial by just pressing the button. And if we did have a navigation system in our car, we would also be able to store a destination like your home or work or anywhere you might frequent to one of the buttons. And simply pressing the button would allow you to navigate to that destination. To store a navigation destination to one of these buttons, simply highlight the address like you would do for a radio station or a phone number, press and hold the button, and now we've stored this address, in this case South Shore Mini, to number three. I can simply press it and navigation begins to that destination. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Moving down a little bit further, in the center here you find your climate control. It is dual zone, fully automatic climate control. You can set your temperatures, driver and passenger side. You can adjust the fan speed with the center dial. If you wanted to manually select where the air comes out of, Pressing the little person down here will toggle through different vent options from up high to middle to down low to a combination of two or three of them. Pushing automatic allows the system to manage where the air comes out of. The row of buttons below our climate control dials are all climate related functions. We have heated seat, high, medium, and low. We have the front defrost, the rear defrost. We have the recirculated cabin air, air conditioning, maximum air conditioning, and then all the way on the right is the passenger's heated seat. The row of toggles at the bottom, starting on the left, you have the disable function for the start-stop system. And that system is the fuel-saving system that will turn the engine off when you come to a stop at a red light, for example. If you want to disable that system, you give this a press. The orange light indicates the system is deactivated. Right here in the center, we of course have our start-stop switch. To the right, we have another disable function, and this would be to disable the traction control system. And all the way on the right are our driving mode selector. We actually have three driving modes. Sport is of course going to be your most dynamic and engaging mode. It's going to give you more response with the throttle, it's going to be a bit of a tighter, more go-kart-like experience. It's really a lot of fun. Mid is going to be balanced and in between sport and green. The car will always start in mid. 
and green is going to be your most efficient and it's the mode that you'd want to go into in order to get the best possible fuel economy and range this mode is going to also help to reduce the load from climate control on the car to make it as efficient as possible I hope this has been a helpful introduction and overview of your new Mini Cooper S Countryman All 4. Once again, I'd like to congratulate you on your new car. And of course, please feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have going forward, and I'd be happy to answer them. Once again, my name is Warren. I am the product genius here at South Shore Mini. Hope you all have a wonderful day and hope to see you in the next video. Please remember to subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with the latest content that we'll be putting out. Take care, everyone.